Hey everyone, welcome back to another amazing episode of Ed Up Career Schools, The Scoop with your host, Kathy Belletti. So today we are talking about leadership traits. This should have been a topic that's discussed almost every single day in workplaces because guess what? Your employees, they drive activity for your company. So today I really want to talk to you about the top traits of great leaders. And this is for anyone who's been in leadership 10 plus years, right? Decades or people who are considering getting into leadership. Number one, leadership is not easy. It's definitely worth it. And it's a service. The first trait is empathy. Empathy is so important when it comes to leading a team. Let's take higher education, for instance. When we're talking to students, we're always telling our teams, you know, empathy is very important when communicating with students. You have to know their circumstances. You have to know their backgrounds, right? You have to get to know them. You have to be empathetic. You have to be sympathetic to their situation so that they're able to open up, so that you have the opportunity to understand who they are in order to actually help them. So that's what we're always preaching to our advisors. You have to show empathy. If someone is telling you that something is going on in their lives, it's very important for you to understand their situations and get them on the same level as you so that you can now break that wall down. And now you have an open dialogue where you may be able to help that person. It's all about building trust and rapport. When it comes to your employees, it's, I'm paying you to do a job, so you need to leave that at the door. Why is that? If in fact you have an employee on your team who has a very sick family member or they lost someone in their family, heck, if they lost a pet, it happened to me twice, right? Uh, that's something that people take to heart. When it comes to depression, these are real issues. But when it comes to your employees who have the same setbacks and circumstances as our students, it's drama. This is where your mindset is today. You need to take a PTO. What is that, right? How about you put yourself in a position where number one, you understand who your team is? Because a lot of times, if you don't have that sixth sense where you're able to say, hold on, the way that she said good morning to me, mm -mm, something is off cat. Come on, let's go talk. Sometimes your employees, they only need an outlet so that they can purge, so that they can talk through the situation, so that they can get it out of their system. And then what you don't realize is after they're able to have that opportunity, they go back to the floor and they perform even better than they did the day before, knowing that this circumstance was actually coming up, knowing that the drama was about to happen. Employees need to know that you care. A lot of what you do every single day, it's emotional and it's mental. If that is not where it needs to be, guess what? Productivity takes a hit. In other words, so does your school or your institution. Get to know your employees. They matter, right? So when it comes to feelings, it's not something that you can turn off and leave at the front door. These are things that pop up throughout the day, but guess what? If they know that you care, now they have an outlet to say, you know what? I'm feeling a type of way today. X, Y, and Z happened. Can we talk for a little bit? And once they get it off their chest, they're going to be able to perform. You have to make sure that you're giving your team an outlet to really express themselves. So empathy is very important. It's not just for our students. The second thing is self-reflection. As a leader, it's critical to really take the time and understand you know, your interactions during the day, you know, and you have to ask yourself, how often as a leader do you go home at the end of the day and you say, all right, let me think about the conversations that I had today. How was it received? Sometimes you have to self-reflect and say, all right, so I had to have a tough conversation today. Do I feel that the message actually landed? How did this person actually receive that message? Here's the thing, when you have high turnover, at your company when you have unmoded or demotivated employees because there's a difference you have unhappy employees you have people who are quiet quitting listen quiet quitting is huge nowadays right and in a lot of cases you've seen this coming but you just didn't care enough right you had that person on your team where you have kevin who was the innovative person he always had all the ideas he was excited about taking the company to the next level and now you ask uh kevin a question and he's like i don't know Go ask Kelly. 
What happened to Kevin? The whole thing is Kevin been walking down this road for months now and nobody was ever paying attention, right? But a lot of the items that I just discussed has a lot to do with irresponsible leadership. When it comes to being a leader, number one, is not for everyone, right? But when you are called to lead, you are now called to serve. When you are called to lead, you now have a responsibility. You are responsible for a group of people right now. So it's no longer just about you. You're responsible for their success. You're responsible for their growth. In some cases, you're responsible for their failures. And here's one thing that some of you may not agree with, but you are responsible for their self-confidence or lack thereof. If you're treating people as if they have no options, you lose your team, right? If you're talking to people like you're addressing your two-year-old, you will lose your entire team. When it comes to being a leader, you have to get to know the people who are on your team, number one, because in a lot of cases, you know, the same way that we tell students, you can't help someone that you don't know. And we're not talking about you going to your employee's house every single week for a barbecue or attending all of their events. No, just having a simple conversation. I'm sure some of you have people on your team who you've been working with for 10 plus years and you're thinking to yourself, are they married? How do you not know <laughs> at no point in time did this conversation come up about who they are as a person or what's important to them? Sometimes as a leader, you have to turn the situation around. And if you had a tough conversation, you have to say to yourself, hmm, if I was sitting in their seat, how would I have felt walking away from this conversation? Number one, did I understand the assignment? Number two, how would I have felt if someone addressed me that way? Words are very powerful. The way that you present information is very powerful. So if you decide that leadership is something that you want to take on, you have to understand that you now have a responsibility every single day that you show up at work. Do you want a team who follows you because they have absolutely no choice? because they have to work, because they have families that they need to feed. Those are the people who have one foot in and one foot out, just waiting for the next opportunity. Or would you prefer a team who follows you because they want to, because they believe in you, because they understand that you have their best interest at hand? When it comes to leadership, a lot of it has to do with how your team feels about coming into work every single day. A lot of times people talk about the Sunday night blues, right? You have the bubble guts Sunday night because you're not looking forward to Monday morning. And guess what? In a lot of cases, that feeling doesn't come because you're thinking about, oh my gosh, productivity tomorrow, what kind of day it's going to be. A lot of times your employees feel that way because they hate where they work. And it's not the company it's the leaders. People do not leave companies. They leave places where they do not feel appreciated, valued, and respected. So sometimes as leaders, you have to take a step back and think about when you were an employee and how you were treated. Did you enjoy how you were being treated? If you didn't, now you need to display the opposite of what you've experienced, right? So being able to self-reflect every day is going to be huge. It is needed if you want to keep a strong team. Here's the third one, humility. When it comes to humility, right? You have to be approachable. I mean, come on. You have to be receptive to building relationships with people on your team. I hear a lot of people say, you know what? <clears throat> When it comes to building relationships, come on, this is a workplace, okay? I don't need to get to know these people, these people, right? Yeah, but you have people, human beings with blood running through their veins who work with you, who drive activity for your team. How are you leading a group of people who are afraid to come and talk to you about anything? If in fact you have employees who need help, people on your team who are drowning, if you are not approachable, they're not going to come to you and say, um, yeah, I need help. Are you, can we spend a couple minutes together so that you can retrain me or coach me in certain areas? 
if they feel as if you are not the person who's approachable, if they feel as if your response is going to be, how many times do I have to show you this again? Guess what? You are going to have a team of people who are going to continuously fail. And now guess what? It hits their self-esteem. And then all of a sudden you walk into work thinking it's going to be a grand old day. And then you received a same day notice. Cause let's get real. Ain't nobody giving out two weeks notices nowadays, right? Do you want to put yourself in that position just because you don't want to take the time to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your team members every single week to find out where their mindset is, right? It's the same thing. When we talk about students and when we talk about the follow-up process in admissions, right? After the person enrolls and you want to make that 24-hour buyer's remorse call, you want to gauge where their mindset is. Who do they talk to in their surroundings? Are they still excited? What is going on in their lives? Because anything can change within 24 hours. It's the same thing when it comes to your team. Have a one-on-one -on -one every single week with the people on your team. Get to know who they are. How do they feel about their performance from the week prior? What are their goals? What are their goals? Notice I said their goals, not your expectations for them. What are their goals? For the upcoming week and then sometimes take it away from productivity and talk about what their goals are professionally you may find that some people want to get into a leadership role some people may want to train some people may want to leave <laughs> and not necessarily your department but they may want to go and join a different team within your institution because that's where they feel their personality is best suited for right but you're not going to know that if you don't have the if you don't have these type of conversations when you're showing humility that means that you now become humble right that means that pride goes out the window that means that when you started getting into leadership and you thought it was about just bossing people around and giving out orders without being the example when you're humble you understand that you are not the smartest person in the room right because great leaders hire people who are smarting and who are smarter than them but when you have a team who's afraid to express themselves guess what you may have that person on your team sitting there silent who is the key to the next level for your company or your school you have to be humble as a leader you have to give the people on your team an opportunity to shine and to showcase their skills. Isn't that why you hired them? Or did you hire people to make you bigger? These are things that we don't normally think about because they're hard topics. These are things that we don't think about because we don't want the truth to smack us in the faces, right? And guess what? All of us has been there. All of us have been there. When I started off as a leader, and some of these things I did, right? Because in some cases is what I saw and is what I understood was leadership, right? But as I continue to grow, you know, you come into your own and you're like, mm -mm. this is not how you want to lead because this is not about company growth, right? At the end of the day, that's where everyone is trying to get to. But now you have to work yourself backwards and say, well, how do I get there? And it starts with your employees. If you have employees who are just coming into work because they have to, guess what? Your company will continuously fail because they're not there for the right reasons. And in a lot of cases, it stems from the type of leaders that they're working for. So I just call them managers and bosses, right? Because great leadership, they're in places where they're able to promote other leaders. They're in places where they actually care about the people that are on their team. And it's about them first before ourselves. All right, so really think about these tips. Take a self check, right? And, and really look at your team members. Um, look at some of the people who you've realized have gone dark, <laughs> you know? Look, I've been there and when you understand your team, even now, some of the advisors that I work with nationwide, you know, I, I like to get to know people. Because it's not just about jumping in and training on concepts. I need to know who you are as a person. And I need to understand what your objectives are and what your dreams are, right? And it's to the point where if I log on with someone and they're like, good morning, I'm like, hold on for a second. What happened yesterday? And a lot of cases, they're like, what are you talking about? Mm -mm. And then all of a sudden, they start to open up because I know who they are. I understand who they are. And a lot of it has to do with because I've been in your seat, so I get it. So sometimes as leaders, you got to go right back to that employee 
you know, those years where you were actually an employee and say, you know what, I remember how I was treated and I didn't like it. So the last thing I want to do is follow down those same footsteps. All right. If you want to grow a team, you got to make sure that you're feeding into them. You got to feed your team. You got to feed their soul. You have to give recognition for hard work. Okay. It's not about, I paid you to do this job. Yeah. We already know that. No one needs to be told that every single day, but you have to show humility, be approachable. Okay. And you would be surprised where your team can take you and your institution. All right. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this episode, but I wish you all good luck. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. And until next time. I really hope that you enjoyed that episode. I have been working diligently to bring awareness to career schools. There's so much that they have to offer our students and our community. Every single role within the admissions process is critical, whether you're a part of the admissions team, financial aid, career services, academics, everyone deserves a voice. Admissions is the first point of contact for your school. So you want to ensure that you have a team who exudes confidence, passion, and a clear understanding of effective communication with our potential students. I totally understand the pain of missed class starts, low appointment and enrollment conversions, and this is why I created Next Level Admissions Training by Motivate with KAT. This platform is a step-by-step -step process, and it is going to train your new and tenured advisors in every single step of the enrollment process to ensure that our students are inspired, and they're ready and prepared to start class. Admissions is not easy. It can be very challenging, but it's definitely worth it. So if you're ready to take your school to the next level, head on over to lessons.motivatewithkat.com and check out Next Level Admissions.